Amazon just had a massive hit with Fallout, but don't be too hasty to credit that win to Amazon, as it had the fortune of having Jonathan Nolan. The recently released trailer for Season 2 of the long-dreaded Rings of Power should demonstrate that Amazon is still Amazon, and proving that Amazon is gonna Amazon, they just announced that they've got their clutches into Lara Croft Tomb Raider, and they're handing her over to Phoebe Waller-Bridge. And that's not even the worst news. Let's find out what is. This video is sponsored by Incogni. Amazon put out what is arguably bad news to Tomb Raider fans everywhere by way of a press release and Deadline Hollywood summarized it quite well in their headline. Tomb Raider from Phoebe Waller-Bridge lands series order at Amazon. And as we're about to see, these are very, very bad news and nothing at all to get excited about. The story proper reads, Phoebe Waller-Bridge's adaptation of video game Tomb Raider is scaling the walls at Amazon. Ha, punny. The streamer has handed the project a series order. That means no pilot, and no production schedule that allows time to incorporate any kind of audience feedback. So Fleabag's initial vision is what's gonna get filmed. And if you thought that she was the bad news, well, we're just getting started. Strap in, because the story continues. The news was revealed by heads of Amazon and MGM Studios Jennifer Salky at the company's upfront event in New York who called it an epic and globe-trotting series. That right there is the real bad news for this series. Not that it's epic or that it's globe-trotting, mind you, but that Jennifer Salky just publicly associated herself with it. We're about to see why that is even worse news than Fleabag show running it. But before we get into that, have you noticed how so many of the online ads you come across seem oddly personal to you? Well, there's a reason for that, and it doesn't stop with ads, because that's where the spam emails and maybe even automated robocalls begin, and it only gets worse from there. If you ever signed up for a newsletter, a website, or some other service, then chances are your data was resold without you ever agreeing to it. There's a shadow industry of data brokers aggregating, buying, and reselling personal data like your full name, email address, phone number, home address, SSN, shopping habits, online alias, employment history, financial information, and much, much more. And as valuable as that information may be for those trading in it, all you get out of it is of course spam, and even that is a best case scenario. In the US in particular, your data may end up in public search sites where you really don't want it to be. For example, health insurance companies are known to use some of that data as determinants of health, meaning your documented online activity may actually increase your rates. There is also the risk that your data sooner or later will be leaked in a data breach where it's made freely available for outright criminals, putting you at additional risk of more targeted scams and even identity theft, where loans may be taken out in your name. The good news, though, is that no matter how they obtained it, you have the right to request that these data brokers delete the information they have about you. The bad news is that there are hundreds of them, and each and every one will try every trick to weasel out of deleting your data. And worse still, even if they do, there's nothing preventing them from collecting it again. The really good news, then, is that Incogni, this video sponsored, can take care of this for you. Incogni helps you protect your privacy and take your personal data off the market by reaching out to data brokers on your behalf, demand your personal data be removed, and plow through their objections as they come. And better still, they'll send repeat removal requests in case they should get a hold of your data again. And best of all, the whole process is automated. All you have to do is create an account, grant Incogni the right to work on your behalf, and kick back and relax while they do the work for you, keeping you up to date with the progress every step of the way. And since this video is sponsored by Incogni, we naturally have a deal for you. Use our code MIDNIGHT at the link in the description, and you'll get 60% off an annual Incogni plan. So head down to the description and get your data protected now. 
With that, let's move on to why beyond the already bad news of Fleabag, Jennifer Solke is the even worse news for Tomb Raider. Long-term viewers of this channel will of course be familiar with Jennifer Solke, but since every video is someone's first video, let's do a quick intro. You know how Rey is Kathleen Kennedy's self-insert into Star Wars. Well, allegedly, Galadriel, you know, the one in whom there is a tempest, is Jennifer Solke's self-insert into the Rings of Power. You see, Jennifer Solke is the Kathleen Kennedy, Amy Pascal, and Alyssa Heinerscheid of Amazon Studios all rolled in to one. By which I mean, she has Kathleen Kennedy's understanding of the properties under her control, as well as her insight into the wants and needs of their fan base. Television has been a big focus of our attention right now, but there's still so much interest in what happens after Rise of Skywalker. She has the wit and the grace of Amy Pascal. Well, those movies will all take place in the world that we are now creating for for you know for Peter Parker. I mean, it'll there'll be adjuncts to it. They may be different locations, but it will still all be in the same world and they will be connected to each other as well. And finally, the ideological conviction of Alyssa Heinlichite. Okay, what is what do, what does evolve and elevate mean? It means inclusivity. It means shifting the tone. It means having a campaign that's truly inclusive and feels lighter and brighter and different and appeals to women and to men mm -hmm. and representation is at sort of the heart of evolution you've got to see people who reflect you in the work you know the one who commissioned dylan mulvaney to expand the bud light brand which turned out to be an expansion that the formerly number one beer brand in America, and therefore the world, has yet to recover from. And Salki, of course, already did something similar for Amazon. The just-released trailer for Season 2 of The Rings of Power was ratioed into oblivion, and many felt a bit of schadenfreude when Warner announced that they would soon be dropping the trailer for Season 2 of House of the Dragon, since Season 1 of that kicked The Rings of Power's ass, both in ratings and reviews. Well, that brings us to Jennifer Salke's biggest hit. A couple of years back, Amazon were developing a Conan the Barbarian series, and knowing a little bit about what was planned for it, I can guarantee you it was going to be amazing, and everything a Conan series should be. But then Jennifer Salke was hired, read the scripts, had a fit and a borderline nervous breakdown, and pulled the plug there and then, allegedly over the toxic masculinity on display. This was a big blow to the just-fired Conan showrunners, but Warner swooped in and hired them to fix Game of Thrones for them, and in no time flat, they set up House of Dragon for them, just in time to go directly up against Jennifer Salke's Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power. How's that for irony? But incredibly, even if she indirectly created the Rings of Power's biggest competition, Salki hasn't been fired yet, and that she associates herself with Tomb Raider this way suggests that just like both the Rings of Power and the Wheel of Time, this is another female-centric project that she won't be able to keep her hands off. As such, Tomb Raider is one of those projects that's likely going to get Salki's special attention, ensuring that it's going to be as diverse, equitable, inclusive, and lest we forget, as overall misandrist and subversive as possibly can be. Not that it would need any more help to do that, with Fleabag at the helm, but with the two of them, well, fans might want to hold on to their Angelina Jolie movies. Let's move on with the Deadline Hollywood article, because Fleabag is covered next. If I could tell my teenage self this was happening, I think she'd explode. Tomb Raider has been a huge part of my life and I feel incredibly privileged to be bringing it to television with such passionate collaborators. Which includes Jennifer Salke. Lara Croft means a lot to me, as she does to many, and I can't wait to go on this adventure, bats and all, said Waller Bridge. Yeah, she said something similar about Indiana Jones. Didn't work out too well for him, though, and Waller Bridge is getting quite the track record of box office disasters that are widely rejected by fans everywhere. 
The story continues with some modestly good news though. It's the latest order for Amazon this morning, which gave the Nick Cage-led Spider-Man live-action series an order alongside a slew of unscripted series and renewals. That would be Spider-Man War, a side character from the recent animated Spider-Man movies that was actually voiced by Nicolas Cage, and that might actually be cool. And the good news for that is that with Salky's attention on Tomb Raider and the Rings of Power, there's a good chance that just like Fallout and Reacher, the showrunners behind Spider-Man War might be left alone so they actually can make something good. But with the card-carrying activist duo of Phoebe Waller-Bridge and Jennifer Salky spearheading Tomb Raider, I am ready to write that one off, right off the bat. But what about you? Are you excited for this, or indeed for the Rings of Power or Spider-Man War? Let me know in the comments. And before you go, don't forget to protect your personal data with Incogni. Use our code MIDNIGHT at the link in the description, and you'll get 60% off an annual Incogni plan.